Welcome to episode 5 of Barry Science Lab Astronomy. Today we're talking about one of the most important forces in our universe, and that is gravity. Gravity is what holds objects down. It's why if I throw something up, like this little tiny wallet, if I throw it up, down it goes. Gravity pulls it down. Why does gravity work the way it does? What is the mathematical formulation describing it? And how can we understand this force at a deeper level? Let's find out. You might not realize it, but gravity is one of the most fundamental things in our universe. It's the reason why planets, stars, and everything else in the universe seems to be a sphere and not any other shape. It's because gravity molds things together into the most uniform, symmetric shape possible. And that's a sphere. Gravity is the reason why objects orbit each other in elliptical or circular orbits. Gravity is the reason little tiny creatures like us are bound to little tiny planets like the Earth. So let's say I have a mass m1 and m2 and the distance between the mass m1 and m2 is d. And the gravitational force between m1 and m2 of course is fg. Now guess what? Now I'm going to double the distance. So it's not going to be d, it's going to be 2d. Uh, how would that affect the fg? Good question. If we have two masses, m1 and m2, separated by a distance d and the gravitational force between them is fg, then if we double the distance via the inverse square law of gravitation given to us by Sir Isaac Newton, the force of gravity would not quadruple, it would be a quarter of what it used to be, right? Because we have an inverse square law. Now, that being said, even though the mathematical formulation of gravity is deceptively simple, that doesn't mean the force itself is easy to understand. You see, gravity is a very, very weird thing. It even stupefied the great Sir Isaac Newton. He said, this is the mathematical formula that describes gravity, but I cannot tell you why it works why gravity works the way it does. In fact, Isaac Newton himself was bothered by the fact that gravity acts at a distance. It bothered him that the sun could somehow reach across the vacuum of space and bend the earth so that it orbited in an elliptical orbit. I mean, how? There's no tangible connection between the sun and the earth. There's no rope. There's no medium. How does gravity know that there's a planetary body that's orbiting the sun? These are the things that make gravity complicated. Then we already have a comprehensive theory of gravity, which rising Newton's law of universal gravitation. Why did we need Einstein's general relativity? Good question, Isaac. The difference between Sir Isaac Newton's universal law of gravitation and Einstein's theory of general relativity is the fundamental difference in their framework. First of all, Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation tells us that gravity is an inverse square law of force. It tells us nothing more, nothing less. It gives us a way to calculate the gravitational force between two masses to a high degree of accuracy. Whereas the general theory of relativity tells us that gravity is merely a consequence, a consequence of the geometry of the curvature of space-time itself. And why does space-time curve? Space-time curves due to the mass of celestial bodies. Therein lies the difference between Sir Isaac Newton's law of universal gravitation and Einstein's theory. Folks, thank you for listening to the fifth episode of Barry Science Lab Astronomy. I hope you've learned something and we'll see you in the next one.